Today I'm going to be disassembling and removing the engine from this Toyota Corolla. Now we're going to start it up and see how it runs. Some of the main components of the engine here are your alternator, your AC compressor down at the bottom there, there's your water pump, then at the back there somewhere is your power steering pump. Of course you have the engine block here, you've got your intake over here, your throttle body, the battery, the air filter, a bunch of hoses over here all in between here. Now the engine is located on this side of the car and the transmission is located under the air filter assembly down in here. Now I'm going to be disassembling and removing the main components off of the engine before I remove it. If you're going to be doing a straight engine swap, there's no need to follow the first couple of steps in this video. So in order to remove the water pump, I'm going to first remove the belt from the alternator. And now with the alternator free, I can remove it from the vehicle. So now with the alternator out of the way, we have clear access to the thermostat housing over here, the lower radiator hose back here, as well as the water pump over here. So now that the water pump is free, I can remove it from the engine block. Alright, so with all the lines free, I can now remove the radiator from the vehicle. Now there's a couple of 12 millimeter bolts that hold this AC compressor on. So with all the bolts free, I can remove the AC compressor. Alright, and now with the condenser loose, I can remove it from the vehicle. Alright, I'm going to lift out the battery to get a better view. Alright, so at the back here, I'm going to disconnect some electrical connectors, the mass airflow sensor, as well as a vacuum line over here. And then I can remove the top of the air box. Alright, so I'm going to pull out this box. So over here at the throttle body, I'm going to remove the PCV hose. There are two cooling lines that connect to the throttle body here. So with the coolant lines removed, I can now remove the throttle body. So next I'm going to remove the intake plenum off of the engine. Now if you look in behind the intake, there's three main hoses. One that goes to the brake booster, one goes to the PCV valve, and one goes to the EVAP. Alright, so with everything free, I can now remove the intake from the engine. Alright, so now that the intake is removed, we need to remove a couple of hoses here. We've got the brake booster hose two hoses for the heater core and then these two hoses here for your evap that need to be removed to clear up this area now here at the back of the engine we've got this exhaust shield that needs to be removed because we need to remove the exhaust headers so now the exhaust shield is out of the way i can work on removing the exhaust studs to get it off the engine and then lift it out and here's the exhaust manifold removed from the engine now the power steering pump is held to the engine block by these two 14 millimeter bolts. Now over here on the back of the engine we have this low pressure line that goes back to the reservoir and we have the high pressure line that goes out to the power steering rack. So now I can remove the power steering pump from the back of the engine here. So if we have a look at what's going on so far, I've got the exhaust manifold off, power steering lines and the power steering pump, the AC compressor, the water pump, the thermostat, the radiator, condenser, as well as the intake, uh, the batteries off and the air box. Next I'm going to start tackling all the wiring coming out of the firewall here. It goes up to the valve cover and splits on both sides. Then it goes over to the starter motor over there, the battery over here, and the fuse box over here. Alright, so I've got the entire electrical wiring harness free from the engine. I can move it out of the way so I can work on the transmission. Now the starter is held on by two bolts, one at the top and one at the bottom here. Just like that. So there are two main cables that go to the transmission. There's a the shift cable, and then there's the throttle cable. So the throttle cable was connected to the throttle body. So here's a closer look at the shift cable. I've already disconnected it. This is the lever that changes the gears. And over here we've got the bracket with two 14 millimeter bolts that hold this cable onto the transmission. So here's a closer look at what that shift linkage looks like. Now I'm going to remove the fuel line. It goes to the fuel rail. There's this connector over here. So the inside of this fuel line here has four little tabs that I pressed down with a screwdriver and I was able to pull it out. There is a special tool you can get to do this easier. Drain the engine oil, drain the transmission, remove the wheel. Now I'm going to remove the 30 millimeter axle nut. I'm going to push the axle through and then remove it from the spindle. Over here at the back of the engine, I'm going to remove this heat shield that goes over the CV shaft. So here we are underneath the transmission. This is where the axle connects to the transmission. I'm going to use a big crowbar here and pry out the axle. So I was able to get out both axles using this big long pry bar. For the passenger side, I got it from the top. And for the driver's side, I got it from the driver's side wheel well. So this car has a total of four engine mounts. One over here at the transmission. One at the back there underneath the steering rack. And one at the front here. And finally one over here on the side of the engine. Alright, so now that the axles are out of the way, the next thing I'm going to tackle is this rear engine mount down under here. So looking from the driver's side, this is the bolt I need to remove. So to take pressure off of the rear mount, I'm going to jack up the transmission slightly. So the engine bolt is out. The next thing I need to do is remove this bracket. It's held on by three bolts, one here and then two at the top here. Next I'm going to remove these three nuts that hold the rear engine mount onto the subframe. 
Well, I got the bushing loose, but I couldn't get these mount brackets out, so that's gonna have to stay for now. Next, I'm going to tackle the front engine mount. So I'm gonna jack up the transmission pan. Now I'm going to remove the 17 millimeter nut. So this engine mount is busted. I can't get the bolt out because it's stuck to the rubber. So I'm going to have to remove the engine mount from the bottom. So there are two bolts underneath this cavity here that hold the engine mount on. So even if I try to remove these two bolts that hold the mount to the engine block, it won't budge. So the transmission mount, we've got two 14 millimeter bolts at the top here and two at the side here that hold it to the fender frame. And then over here we've got a bolt that goes through the bushing and then two bolts that hold it to the transmission. So I've jacked up the transmission slightly and supported it with a jack stand. Alright, now I'm going to remove the bushing bolt. Alright, so the bolt is out and the transmission is free from the engine mount. Now I'm going to remove the remaining bolts that hold the mount to the frame. So I use the wrench to loosen the 14 millimeter bolt at the back here and the one on this side. All right, so with the mount loose, I can now remove it from the transmission. Over here on the passenger side, we've got three bolts that hold it to the frame here. And then we've got two bolts here that hold it to this engine mount and then the bushing bolt. All right, so now I've got a jack stand under the oil pan and I'm going to remove the 17 millimeter bushing bolt. All right, so now that all the engine mounts are free, the engine is just resting on the jack stands below. So now it's time to strap it up. Now one of the best things to use to lift up the engine is seat belts. If you're scrapping the car, these are pretty easy to get and they're really strong. To get more clearance, I'm going to remove the hood. Okay. So the hood is off. I've got the engine chained up. Seat belts on one engine mount over there. Seat belt on the transmission mount over here. All right, so the crane is now supporting the engine above the vehicle. Now I'm going to roll the car back so I can drop the engine down. All right, and there's the engine and transmission completely removed from the car. And this is pretty much what the engine bay looks like without an engine. And this is the engine and tranny removed from the vehicle. Check out the size of that wheel gap in the front there with the engine removed. All right, so next I'm going to separate the engine from the transmission. There are a number of bolts that go around the bell housing of the transmission where it connects to the engine here that need to be removed. So there's two bolts at the top here, one over here, and then one at the back here. All right, so I'm going to remove the 14 millimeter bolts at the back of the engine. Okay. There's a lot of fluid in there, Dad. Yeah. All right, so I've got the engine and tranny disconnected. So with the engine unbolted from the transmission, we have here the torque converter, which is bolted to the flywheel. So I need to remove that next. So underneath the engine where the access cover is, there are a couple of 12 millimeter bolts that I need to remove from the flywheel. All right, so I've got the torque converter free from the engine. Now I'm gonna remove the flywheel by removing these 14 millimeter bolts. That's the flywheel. So the last step is to mount this onto an engine stand. So here I've got the head of the engine stand. It's got these adjustable arms that'll bolt to the transmission housing area on the engine block. So I've used the engine mount bolts to bolt on my stand face. All right, so I'm gonna line up my engine stand here. All right, so the crane is now lined up with the engine stand and I can remove the chains. And that's pretty much it, how you remove an engine from a Toyota Corolla.